when Jesus spoke these words, okay. this generation. Um, excuse me, I heard you and I didn't voice. interrupt you. So show me the same kind of civility. Thank you. So when Christ was speaking, this generation, he didn't mean the generation in 1980s. He didn't mean the the, the generation X or the TikTok generation. Uh, Sergio, out of did I interrupt him when he was speaking? You have a con. Yeah, but you're taking it out of context. Why, why is this that's gentleman interrupting when, when, when it's... So that's a heckler. It's not Islam corner. So, Islam so it's a heckling. It's called, so that's not called, no, it's called discussion. It's a heckling. A okay, Sergius. So we will ignore the hecklers. I'm going to go direct to the text. So when Christ is saying this generation should not pass, this generation, he's referring to the generations which is within him. Okay. He didn't say, oh, this generation in 1983, was it? He wasn't. Uh, I guess not. Exactly. Well, no, no, you, 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 don't, don't look, look, it, look, look here. He's putting, look at he's putting it. it out of the whole concept. Truly, I tell you, this generation right. will generation? certainly not pass away until all these yeah, things have happened. So before. when he's speaking to them about this generation, any sensible reader, Honest whether you're a lay person reader. or a scholar, you would know. Take the reference, Matthew 24, 34. But it is this what Jesus said. That's the text, right? Matthew 24, yeah. 20, they said, when are you coming back? Um, Matthew Sergius. 24, 25, he gave, I will I give think, you a whole load of signs. I think we, we can ignore, yeah, we can be ignore the heckler, right? Okay. Yeah, the Here, the, the when Christ is saying, he doesn't say, oh, in the future there will be a generation and you'll do this maths and you'll make up this prophecy. No, he's simply saying, you, this generation, this generation will not pass until you see me coming back in the clouds in heaven. Guess what? 2,000 years have almost gone. This generation pass, and the next generation, and the next generation, many generations pass, so it's a failed prophecy. Right, so when we're now coming back, so when we're coming back now about the concept of how do we ascertain, authenticate and validate a scripture, we look at, we look at the truthfulness of his, and accuracy of his message. Truthfulness and accuracy of his message. What if this book contains historical errors? You would say, God is not the one who will make mistakes because he knows the history just like he knows the future prophecies keep coming wrong he is ignorant of the future historical thing gets it right he's unaware of the past he's not all knowledgeable so when the bible makes the mistakes of the history one example is about the pharaohs at the time of moses um, at the time of moses and joseph these two prophets right we know from Egyptian history, roughly around this time, what they were called in their particular title. You know when we say a king, king is a title of someone's authority in being in charge, right? You can call that an Amir or a president, what different localities have different concepts. They had the pharaohs at that time. And the pharaoh had specific titles and conventions of titles. At the time of Moses and at the time of Joseph, from our historical record, if we were to align these people from the historical time frame, they didn't have the same time table. The monarchs or the, the people in authority in charge at the time of Joseph the prophet, peace be upon him, they were called kings. They were not called pharaohs. At the time of Moses, it was called pharaoh. The Bible doesn't make that distinction. It called both of them pharaohs. Now we know it's wrong historically. At the time of Guess Moses, what? They were not called Guess what? Guess what? He doesn't even know. Even today, he doesn't even know. So, no, guess no, what? No, no, the Quran. No, no, no. Very wrong. Sergios, the Quran. Quran distinguishes this and says, addresses the, the man in charge, the authority in charge, as the king at the time of Joseph, peace be upon him, and Pharaoh or Pharaoh at the time of Moses. So now, even looking at historically, you need to understand how does the Quran get this right when the Bible gets it wrong? You know, some people say, oh, the Quran copied from the Bible. Why is the Quran not copying their mistakes? But it's giving you something that we didn't know until the hieroglyphics were discovered. And hieroglyphics were un, you know, what's it called, unpacked. Now we know because the hieroglyphics tells us all the stories. So the criteria we are using, concept of God, message contents, the accuracy of his message. Accuracy. Accuracy. You'll find when you talked about, what about the Bible? I'm afraid it's not my liking or disliking yeah, yeah, the bible right. fails on that count okay the quran on the other hand challenges people to show otherwise so this is the thing sir Kios, you will be you, your next thing to do perhaps 
Let's challenge the Quran. Let's put the Quran into test. As a Muslim, I will say yes. Quran is free from errors, discrepancies, inconsistencies, contradictions. Quran is free from all of that. The Quran gives us, in fact, falsification test to falsify it. So you can take that and say, let me test it. This is the next step that you can take. If it does fulfill all the criteria and withstands the scrutiny, then you would know the Quran is a revelation from the all-knowledgeable, all-wise, almighty. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Pleasure speaking to you. Uh, me too. Okay. You take care. Um, read the Quran. If you haven't got a copy, if you go this way, there are people with a table on them. Free copies of the Quran. It's all. Oh, there you go. Look. This is for you. A copy. Yeah. Um, read the Quran read, with an open mind. Give the Bible, that will take you five hours. Give the Bible a read, take you 50, and you'll find a third of it is prophecy comes true. I challenge you to read that and find one prophecy that comes true. So read it. I've read okay, the Quran. Okay. Shall I give you a prophecy for you to reflect on? Okay, I'll show you where it is. Uh, the weather's going to be good. Because he's trying to, he's trying to give me a prophecy which I wanted to make you read and find out. Chapter 30 of the Quran is this. Now, here, so you know that this is something that it's the riskiest prophecy anyone can make, riskiest. Why I say that riskiest? This is called Surah Al-Rum, okay, They're about the Romans, right? About the Romans, Alif Lam Mim, right? The Byzantines, the Romans have been defeated in the nearest land, but they will, after the defeat, will what does it say? Overcome, no? overcome i mean they will be victorious again within three to nine years be the in arabic to allah belongs the command uh, before and after and that day the believers will rejoice right here when the quran is revealed it's tell it's telling the author of the quran is telling them look the byzantines the Romans have been defeated in the nearest land, right? It's a historical reality. People know about it. People hear about it. The Persians came, right? And defeated them. What the Quran says, but hang on. They will overcome them. They will be victorious again within Bid'i Sinin. It's an Arabic term which means between three to nine years. Now, if you understand the historical context of the war that happened between the Persians and the Romans, okay, Byzantine Empire and the Persian Empire. These are two superpowers. The way they're happening, once you destroy one, what gives you the certainty to say, you know what, between three and nine years, you will defeat them again. How do you even know that? Because you, look, has, has Russia sprung back again to be the superpower it was before? Once it got dismantled, that's it. No one can say, oh, you know what, Russia will come become a USSR and becomes the contending superpower with USA. You can't do that. This happened and Muslims rejoiced on that day. How can you do that unless you have the knowledge of the unseen of the future? So this is one of the riskiest prophecies. What if it didn't happen? The, the Quran would have been falsified. The Prophet would have been said, okay, you don't even know what you're talking about. So these kind of prophecies, which was not necessary to make, no one asked him to say, okay, give me a prophecy like this. The Quran is giving that information by its own accord and telling you this is what's going to happen. So imagine you, if, you, if you're an imposter, you, you fake to be a prophet and you know your limitation because you don't know everything. And somebody asked, tell me, how do I solve the equations for... Um, General theory of relativity. But what if, like, this is a question. Don't the Quran, like, maybe, like, but the Quran was written by, what, by one person, right? Well, I don't know how the Quran. Quran was, revealed by God to the Prophet. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. To the, same, read or write, to the Prophet. He, had to he, was a, he was illiterate. Yeah, what's your question? Uh, like, can it be, like, for example, like, like supposing, like, uh, they only keep the, uh, the prophets that they got right and. Ah. Uh, that is exactly the point I made earlier. Okay. How do we know the text that we have today yeah, yeah. is transmitted to us without any change? <laughs> so you can, you can go and look at the transmission history. Okay. The Quran has a dual transmission history unlike many of the other scriptures. And that transmission history 
one enriches and emboldens and strengthens the other. One is the textual transmission by writing manuscripts, and the other one is memorization. The whole book was memorized and transmitted, memorized word for word, letter for letter, sound for sound, chapter by chapter, line by line. This is how it was. It was also written down and transmitted to manuscripts. So you can find in Birmingham, or not in Birmingham, um, where is it? The Birmingham manuscript kept. Birmingham University was kept. A manuscript, three, of, you know, a few pages of the Quran which is very close to the time of the companions of the Prophet and you can see how congruous and similar or same it is. Yeah? Orthographical, I think there might be one which is Tawin and Tua on orthographical differences there, but literally otherwise it's identical. Almost. So this is how the transmission of the text is demonstrated from the manuscript tradition. The biblical transmission of the manuscript, we talked about earlier how different it is. So, how do we know this is exactly what it was given to the Prophet from God? We know that from looking at the manuscripts and looking at the traces of the transmission through memorization. The Quran is being memorized today by hundreds and thousands of people who are even not Arabs. They don't even know how to speak Arabic and yet they memorize the whole of the book. Let's look at it. Whole of the book they memorize it. Word for word, letter for letter, in this sequence. This has been a practice yesterday, the day before, the month before, the year before, the decade before, the, 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 the you know, hundred years before and so on. Centuries of practice of Quran memorization. So in this sense, you can be sure that the Quran, the text that we have, is the text that what the Prophet left behind. Thank you very much, okay. you take Very interesting to hear. Okay. Nice talking to you. You take care. Thank you. Brother, assalamu alaikum. I just want to tell you, I came all the way from Kuwait to tell you I love you for the sake of Allah. Uh, me too.